It is not your heart that you hear beating restlessly in the shallow night air. Your heart has been dead silent for some time now. Welcome to Spooktoberfest. Hey everybody, I'm Hawk. Welcome back to the educational half of Rum and Board. Let's learn how to play a game. There are cooperative games, there are competitive games, there are hidden traitor games, and there are asymmetric games. Then there is Betrayal at House on the Hill, which uniquely combines all of those categories into one box for three to six players. If that weren't enough to give Betrayal insane replay value, there are also 50 unique haunts that completely change the feel of the second half of the game. I'm not the traitor. Setup. Setup for Betrayal is dead simple. One, choose your characters. There are 12 choices, each with different starting traits. Two, set out the foyer, the upper landing, and the basement tiles. Three, put your little action figure dudes in the entrance hall, and then make up a pithy backstory about what the f you're doing in a haunted house, only to realize that the door has locked behind you. You're all trapped inside, with only this house to hear your screams. I'm not the traitor. Four, shuffle everything else. The tiles, the cards, your fears, everything. Boom, you're set up. Who said a haunt had to be complicated? Not me, that's for f sure. Characters. Believe it or not, you have a character in this game. In other games, different characters have different powers, but in this game, they have different hobbies. Ox Bellows, for example, who is this beautiful man, loves shiny objects. To distraction. These hobbies have absolutely no impact in the game unless you choose to roleplay your character, which you should, because who doesn't love shiny objects and football? There are four traits, might, speed, knowledge, and sanity. Your character starts out with certain values for each of these, and many objects and tiles in the house will change them over time. Higher values are better, obviously. They let you do more cool stuff in the freaky haunted house. Lower values are worse. The lowest value kills you, but lucky for you, you can't die until the haunt has started. The house just brings you back over and over and over and over and over rooms. This house has three stories. The upper story, the ground story, and the basement. At the beginning, you have no idea what's in store for you, but as you explore, you'd best be prepared. It's gonna be a doozy. Secret passageways, mystic elevators, rooms full of cobwebs, rooms full of blood, rooms that were on fire, and some sweet, sweet, beautiful treasure. Including some hidden behind a mysterious painting. And a coal chute that takes you straight into a room full of dicks. Actually, the basement. Full of dicks. Your turn. You have a frankly overwhelming number of possibilities on your turn. You can do as many actions per turn as you can do. Unlike other games where there's an artificial limit per turn, as if your character has to take a nap every five minutes. Would you nap in a haunted fucking mansion? I mean, yeah, I'm fucking hawk. I sleep where I want. But you probably wouldn't. It's haunted. So what can you do? 1. Move through some number of rooms, up to your current speed value. 2. Discover a new room by walking through a door that has the vast emptiness of space on the other side, only to coalesce into the room that you draw from the tile deck. That's bold of you, I have to say. Most people are not brave enough to walk into a vacuum like that. Good for you, Oxbellows. Chase those shiny things. Discovering a new room frequently results in you drawing a new card, either an event, an item, or an omen. Whatever you draw, just do what it says after reading it aloud. Don't question it, just do it. Which kind of card you draw is determined by the little symbol in the corner of the room that you've discovered. Drawing a card stops you from moving for the rest of your turn. This time, you do need a nap. Three. Use one of your items for nefarious or beneficent purposes. Once during your turn, you may also trade items, drop items, or pick up already dropped items. Four, challenge the dominant player for control of the herd. Mm, no, there's not actually a tile that lets you do that, but there totally should be. There are, however, tiles that let you perform actions or gain sweet treasure if you roll well enough. Five, attack! Only once per turn and only once the haunt starts. If the haunt has bad guys, you can attack them. You roll some attack dice, they roll some defense dice. 
Whoever has the fewest pips on their dice takes the difference in pips as damage to some of their traits. If you won by more than two pips, you can steal an item from them instead of doing damage. Usually, attacks are might attacks, which means that both parties involved roll dice equal to their might value. Certain items, omens, and monsters may change this. When you win an attack, scream Booyah! and do a victory dance. You're on opposite teams, so make that victory hurt. Rub it in their cute little face, or their ugly face, as the case may be. At the end of your turn, if you drew an omen card, you have to roll some dice to see whether or not the haunt starts. The haunt becomes more and more likely as more omens are drawn, so it's only a matter of time. The haunt is inevitable, and you're all going to die horribly. I'm not the traitor. The haunt! Up until this point, the game has been a sort of uneasy co-op, as you all gather items, explore new rooms, and wait with bated breath to see who the traitor is going to be. That all ends when the haunt begins. The traitor is going to be revealed, and your teamwork or lone wolf strategy is going to be punished or rewarded by the ever capricious Lady Luck. I've been the f***ing traitor every time we've played this game, and every time I've lost embarrassingly. Just to be clear, I'm a terrible, terrible traitor. One time, I teleported the bad guy directly into the arms of a spear-wielding child. Because every haunt is different, and I don't want to spoil things for you guys in case you actually want to play this game, I can't go into too much detail about how the haunts progress. Plus, there are 50 of them, and we're not making a two-hour video here. Once your haunt roll results in fewer pips than the number of omens that are out, check the Trader's Tome for which haunt is going to happen to you. That's right. You'll have to brave the greatest terror that America has ever known. Reading at a sixth grade level. There is usually one player who is working for the bad guys, but not always. You'll probably know who that player is, but not always. Sometimes the survivors have to kill the traitor. Sometimes they have to perform a ritual. Sometimes the traitor has to kill the survivors. Sometimes he has to perform a ritual. Sometimes one side just needs to survive long enough to win. The traitor is determined by... Whoa. That was weird. Let's move on. I'm not the traitor. I mentioned this at the beginning, but I think it's worth driving home that this game has 50 unique scenarios. What was the last game that you played 50 times? Oh, Candy Crush Saga. Crossy Road. What is Crassy Road? <laughs> I'm channeling the 50-year-old ghost of the haunted mansion. What is this candy crush? Whoa, there's no iPhones in the afterlife. Thanks for nothing, Steve Jobs. <laughs> so that's Betrayal at House on the Hill, the game where you learn that the true value of friendship is exactly how much stuff you can get from them before stabbing them in the back with a sacrificial dagger. I'm not the traitor. Click through to watch us get creaky playing it as a drinking game. But before you do, subscribe to our channel to get more of this kind of video. Click the like button if you actually did like what you saw. And if you're feeling particularly spooky, leave a comment below telling us what game we should play next. I'll see you next time. But until then, play responsibly. Each game takes about 10 minutes, so you and your group can play as many rounds as you can handle and still have time to move on to something else. But you won't want to, because this is the best game you've ever played.